Welcome back, class. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go right into it today. Um, we're, we're doing week eight, part one. We're going to be talking about logarithms today, and I know that's kind of a weird word, but let's talk about it. Hopefully you've seen it in Algebra 2, and this will be the new concept this week, and we're going to continue it into next week, which is our last week of, which is our last week of doing these. So, you're looking at my iPad. So what we have here is we're going to be talking about logarithms. Now, a logarithm is a big fancy word for a process for solving exponentials. Exponential is like the problem you see here in front of you. It is a problem where there is a, a power that is missing. Not just a number, you know, you figure out which number you put to a power that makes this, but you already have the base number. This is called the base. This is the exponent, obviously. That's the exponent there. I'm um, sorry if you can't see that. And then this is the result of that. This is the result of actually taking a base and putting it to it. So it's the actual you know value for that, that problem. So what we are looking for in this particular problem is we are looking for this exponent. This item right there. That is the item we're looking for, this exponent. Now, some people are really good at this. You know, they can guess numbers. You know, two to the first power, that means two. Two to the second power, that means two times two, right? There's two bases. Uh, two to the third power, that's two times two times two. There's three twos, and that is the actual number we're looking for. So this is the answer for this problem. I know that seems goofy, like, well, where do we can just do that? I can just kind of guess at numbers. But what happens when you can't, when it turns out to be a weird decimal, an irrational number? Um, we have a process for doing this. So um, now what you're looking at here, this is called exponential form. Just so you're aware of that term. Um, it's exponential form. Let me get rid of all these. Two to the third. This is expanded form, the definition of an exponent. And this is the result of it. What we are doing is we are looking at different ways of you know solving these you know efficiently using a graphing calculator, if you will. I think my calculators, um, the calculator I will show you on my screen here, does actually have it, so it's kind of nice. Um, but most calculators do, even the simple ones have a logarithm button, but most people don't know what it does. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at, you know, what we call a circle method, changing this problem into a logarithm, or a logarithm back to this type of form. This is the traditional form. Uh, we'll be looking at power rules, product rules, quotient rules, different rules, and we're going to just introduce them. And then next week, we're going to go into more and more and more. Now, the biggest use for this stuff is probably banking, you know, student loans, um, uh, simple interest loans, compound interest loans, things that you guys are going to be very familiar with, you know, in the very f near and distant future, where, uh, you know, taking out a student loan to go to college, you know, and that type of thing, or getting a mortgage for the first time, or you know, simple things like that, maybe taking out a credit card. Uh, these are things that, you know, real world situations, so this is more practical based stuff. Um, but let's jump right into it. I got a series of problems here, they're quite weird, they're quite. They're quite out there, and I just want to introduce you into them. So I think I got nine problems picked out. Uh, we'll kind of walk through them, and hopefully this makes sense to you. And we'll go to the calculator when we need to. Uh, if all else fails, I can just show you my actual scientific calculator instead of the one that's on the screen. Maybe it'll make more sense to see what buttons I'm hitting. Uh, but yeah, let's jump right in, and hopefully you can follow along with this. Again, hit pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. Um, but let's jump right in. Okay, so what you're looking at here is we are trying to find x for a logarithm. Now, I want to explain what this problem is. Uh, this is the very, very basic problem. Um, let me write this down. This is log base 3 of x equals 5. We are looking for this x. That is the x we're looking for. Now, the thing is, you probably have never been introduced, or maybe you have in Algebra 2, to what this actually means. Um, this is an exponent problem. This is how we solve something. So, um, let, me, let me just kind of walk you through this. Um, this is called a circle method. What I'm about to show you, I'm going to change color here. Um, yeah, let's go to black. Okay, so this is what it is. When you have a logarithm like this, it has a base. If there's no base number, we assume it's a 10, but in this case it's a 3. Um, this is the circle method. You start with the base, you loop your way around until you get back to the x. So what this stands for in terms of exponentials, this is in logarithmic form. I want to change it to exponential. This is 3, base 3, of 5, so 3 to the 5th power, is equal to the x that's sitting right next to the logarithm. So 3 to the 5th power is equal to the x. Now, you're thinking, okay, that's kind of weird. One, why don't they just write it that way? It's a way of going back and forth. If you have a logarithm, you can go back to exponential. If you have an exponential that you can't solve, you can go to logarithmic, 
and then you can type it in your calculator. Now, obviously in this problem, it's easier if I go back to exponential because this is a problem we can solve. We can just do this with a simple calculator. Um, but in logarithmic form, I couldn't see it. So this is the part I want you to think about. This is the part that most people just have never been taught, what a logarithm actually stands for. Log, you know, base 3 of x is equal to the 5. The 5 is the exponent. A logarithm is always equal to the exponent you're putting on the base. This Again, this is the base, and this is the result of that. So if you go back to the vocab words I was using earlier, when I took and found the value. So if we go to this problem, 3 to the 5th power, right? 3, that's my base. The 5 is the exponent. The x is the result. 3 to the 5th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's what it stands for. Now, I think this is 243, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just hear. Um, so, 3 to the 5th. So, 3 to the 5th power. Do I have a 5th power? I can go 3. I'll hit the little XY key. I'll hit the 5. Uh, so, that puts it in the power, and it's 243. So, 3 to the 5th is 3 times 3 times 3. Sorry, my calculator is probably right in the way of that, but... Uh, there you go, and that's the result. And that's the answer for this problem. I know that seems a little strange. You're probably thinking, uh, why don't they just uh, write it? Why don't they just write it in exponential? But in this problem, it's easier to go to exponential to actually solve it. Uh, let's go to the next one. Hopefully this will start to make sense as we go along. Okay, so log base 100, uh, log base 10 of 100. This problem, you could just type in your calculator, and it will tell you the result, which is nice. The calculators are our program to do this. Now, log base 10. Log base 10. This right here is programmed into every calculator. It's the go-to log button. So if you just hit log on your calculator, it assumes it's base 10. It just automatically, you don't have to type in 10, it assumes it's 10. Then, so all you have to do is type in the log button, so it assumes it's base 10, you type in 100 after it, and it will tell you the answer. Now I'm going to tell you the answer right now. It should tell me 2 on a calculator. Now I'm going to jump to the calculator so you can see it. Right to the calculator, and I'm going to type this in. So I'm going to clear out my calculator here so you can see this. All right, so I'm going to hit the log button, but I'm going to type in the the, uh, the number that's right behind it. Because on this calculator here that you have, um, you can actually see my log button, the log base 10 button. I'm going to type in my number first, and then hit the log button. Now before I do this, I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to predict that my answer will be 2. Now, if I hit this log button, boom, it should tell me 2. And that's the answer that I'm looking for. Um, now, let me explain why. Let's talk about, let's go back and go, okay, Ward, you knew the answer. Why was the point? Um, so, let's go back into it. Let's go back into it. Let me explain a little bit. What this problem is actually saying, you know, it's written in log form, so you just type it in the calculator. But if you didn't know that, if you didn't know what a log is, and you went from this log to exponential, so I'm trying to figure out what this is equal to, right? It's a mystery x. I can do circle method. I can do circle method and bring it back to exponential. The base 10 to the power of x equals 100. It's a power of 10. That's easy. If all this is, is when you put an exponent on a 10, it's how many zeros you have after it. So if I put, you know, 10 to the first, it just gives me 10. If I go 10 to the second, it tells me it has two zeros, so it tells me 100. That's how I knew my answer was going to be 2, because a logarithm is equal to the exponent. It's the exponent you put on the base that would make the number next to it. What power do I put on a 10 that would make it 100? Well, it would be a 2. That's, all, that's why, you know, in the last couple weeks, I've been really hammering down scientific notation getting used to powers of tens. Tens are just, you know, you know, if you put powers on tens, it just makes more zeros on them, or it moves decimal places. That's kind of why there's a rhyme or reason to the madness there, and plus it also makes it easier to calculate stuff if you had really big numbers and you couldn't fit it in that calculator. Um, but yeah, so kind of, a, kind of a unique problem. Sorry, I, I already knew the answer to these problems. It was just kind of, I want to break it into easy ones before we get to the really challenging ones. Um, trust me, you're going to see some challenging ones in the next few problems we have here. Um, but yeah, so this is the start of it. So let's keep going. So now, now we can see why this would be good to type in a calculator. I have no answer for this. I couldn't even predict this answer. 
Um, it's log base 10 of 369. I'm trying to predict what power do you put on a 10 that will make 369. Now if I go to the circle method, right, where that was a terrible circle, but this is x. This base to this power equals that number. I can't put a power on a 10 to make it 369 unless it's a decimal. Now, just to give you an idea what I'm thinking here, 10 to the first is 10, so it's not it's not the first power. 10 to the second is 100, so it's not the second power. 10 to the third is 1,000. So, it's a decimal in there. It's a decimal between the second power and the third power. It's probably closer to the second power. Um, so, I don't know, 2.4 if I... 2.3 if I made a guess. I have no idea. The beauty of this problem is we can type it in a calculator. That's the beauty of almost every type of scientific calculator. It has a log button. Now, the, this problem is a base 10. So, my calculator is already programmed for that. If I just hit the log button, I don't need to type in the 10. I just have to type in the 369. And it should give me my answer. Now, let's transfer... And so on this particular calculator, I have to type in the 369 first, so 369. Then all I have to do is hit my log button, because it's already, as you can see on my screen, it's already in base 10. So if I hit that, it's actually saying 2.56, a number, again, I did not predict that. It's a crazy number, 2.567. Um, I was expecting a slightly smaller, but again, it was, it's telling me it's 2.56. Um, that's the power that I put on a 10 to make 369. Now. Just to show you that, just to see, you know, um, it's 2.567. Um, just, just, just kind of walking through this. So 10, if I put an exponent, so I'm going to hit this little x to the y key to put a power on it. I'm going to put 2.567. This will get really close to 369, 368. So it is actually really, really accurate. So it's got to be all the decimals. It's, you know, it's giving you a decimal approximation of it. So. Um, but again, these are how you calculate these things on a, on a scientific calculator. Now again, the reason for this, maybe you need to figure out what power for your particular problem to run into like engineering, or maybe you're going into a bank, and you're trying to figure out, you know, at what month will it spit out this amount of money in my savings account? If Because savings accounts, you know, um, it accrues money over time. That's how savings accounts work, uh, bank accounts work. Uh, banks borrow money from your particular account. They stick money back in without you knowing it because they're borrowing from it. and and so you make money on a savings account as long as you don't remove the money from the account. It's got to stay dormant for a certain amount of time before they start using it. Um, but if you have a lot of money in the account, you can make a lot of money. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting stuff. So you can kind of predict when will my savings account grow to this certain number. It doesn't grow very fast, I can tell you that, So unless you have a lot of money in there. Um, but let's go to the next problem. So let's keep going here. We've got a few problems left. i got about six problems or so left here. Okay, so now we're starting to see the really tough stuff. We're, we have a log, we're trying to figure out what y is. We have a log a base 4 and I, of 1 fourth, and I want to know what this is equal to, the y that's on this side. So what power do I put on a 4 that will make 1 fourth? What power do I put on a 4, so I'm putting a y there, do I, can I make a 1 fourth? Now, you know anything about exponents, maybe from algebra class or um, algebra 2 in fact? If you put negative exponents in a power, it will drop them below the, the fraction. Because right now, it's just a whole number. It's 4, right, to a certain power. But if I put a negative 1 on it, it will drop it below the fraction bar. So the 4 will jump to the bottom, and it will go to a positive power. So this exponent, just tells me, since it's negative, it just tells me it's on the wrong side of the fraction, so it jumps down. Now, why this one is currently sitting up there, there was nothing up there, so you have to put a 1 there. Everything's, you know, everything goes in 1. And so I'm predicting that if I were to type this in a calculator, it should spit out, this This y should be a negative 1. It should spit out that number. Now, let's go to the cal see if this actually does work. So, now, uh, 1 fourth is 0.25 on a calculator, just so you know, so I'm going to type in um, 0.25, oh, but it's power, of, it's a base of 4. My calculator doesn't have base 4. So, let's go back, let's transition here before I go to my calculator to explain how do we, how do we deal with this situation, deal with this situation. Got a little bit ahead of myself here. 
Um, all right, so this is a base four. I can't just go ahead and type up my calculator. My calculator is not programmed for base four. So here's what you do. This is called a change of base. Now I'm gonna rewrite this problem a little bit different. So it's 0.25. It's the same problem. It's just instead of one fourth, it's 0.25. All right, this is called a change of base. You're gonna see this in one of the slides coming up. You can. There's this way of changing this problem so that it will allow you to type in the calculator. And so what you do is this base will drop out the bottom and become its own logarithm. And it will just be on the bottom of a fraction bar, like this. Now what you're doing, this, what you're seeing here, is the same answer as this thing. But what we did is we changed the base. The base on the original problem was base 4. I'm changing it to base 10. And so what you do is you just drop the base number out the bottom, so it's its its own logarithm on the bottom, and this will this will help you type this in. This is what I'm going to type. I'm going to type the 0.25 log button divided by 4 log button, and hopefully it will tell me a negative 1, because this should be the answer for the original problem. Now, let's type it. So, hopefully this allows me, this calculator is kind of simple. So 0 0.25, 0.25, I'm going to hit the log button. So there's the top number. I'm going to divide by the bottom number. The bottom number is 4 log button. And hit equal. Boom. There you go. My answer should be negative 1. Now again, you're thinking, okay, well, you just kind of know these answers. Well, of course, because, well, of course, because I know how exponents work. But it's one of those things like, if you know how to type it in, you know your shortcuts. This is what I just typed in a little bit ago, this, this part about the log 0.25 divided by log 4. I knew what the answer was going to be before I start because I know how exponents work. I know the, the idea of what power you put that will drop numbers down and make it. So it's it's helpful to know exponential form and logarithmic form because it does help you. If you don't if you're really bad at one, you could change to the other and type it in a calculator, or vice versa. Maybe you don't want to type it in a calculator, you want to do it by hand, like I did, to figure out the negative one before we started. Uh, but again, on this problem, the answer is negative one. That's the power that I would put on the base four that would make it one four. Um, but let's go on to the next one. So I think one of these problems will have that, that change of base formula. I think it's the one coming up next. Nope, not next. It's the problem after this one. Okay, so on this one, same same exact concept. I'm trying to figure out what this is equal to. I'll pick an x over here. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what power do you put on a 5? So if I do the circle method, change this back to exponential. What power do you put on a 5, the base 5, that will make up the 125? And you probably already know it. 5 of the first power is a 5, 5 of the second power is 25, 5 of the third power is 125, and there you go, there's your answer. So the third power is the number I'm looking for, this is the answer that I should be getting. Now, on a calculator, how I could type this in so that it will give you the right answer. The log, 125, and then you divide by the log of the base number, I can't my cal iPad just beats it, right, that's so weird one. That's so weird about me. iPad does not allow me to write that. Okay, so I'm dropping this 5 out the bottom, so it'll be its own logarithm. The 125 will be on the top. And if I type this in, it should tell me 3. Again, I'm going to jump right back. Let's take a look, so clear out my calculator here. All right, so 125, hit the log button. Divide by the 5 log button. And tells me 3, and that's the answer I'm looking for. That's the answer I was predicting before we started on this particular problem. Started on this particular problem. Again, it's helpful to know how to do the change of base in case you want to type this in a calculator if you don't want to think too hard about it, or if you just know how exponents work, I can predict what that answer is going to be. This one was nice. It worked out to be a nice number. Not like that problem we did a couple of times ago where it was like 2.5 or whatever. This one had a nice clean number. Uh, but let's go to my next problem. I think i got four problems left here. Uh, this is going to be a decimal. Uh, what power do you put on a 4? What power do you put on base 4 that makes the 22? This is one that I'm going to need to type in a calculator. So um, I don't know. I I mean, I can make the educated guess. 4 to the first power is 4. 4 to the second power is 16. Uh, 4 to the third power is 64. That's 4 times 4 times 4. Um, so it's in between 2 and 3 again. Some weird decimal in between there. Um, but again, how do I type this in? Well, you do the log of 22, and you divide by the log of 4. Because, again, you drop the 4. Since this is the base, you drop it out the bottom, make its own logarithm. The top number is the, the number that was next to the base. And this is what I'm going to type in. This should give me on my calculator the right answer, the calculator here. And let's type this in. So i got the 
22 log button. And I'm going to divide by the 4 log button. 4 log button. Hit enter. And it's telling me my answer is 2.22. That number makes sense. You know, I didn't know what it was going to be. You know, these are unpredictable. I could, you know, I made an educated guess what it was, but uh, I couldn't have got to the 4.22. 4.22. Um, again, kind of, you know, once you see the concepts here, hopefully this is starting to make sense a little bit. You see how, you know, change base formula. Uh, the change base formula, again, is coming up. It's one of those slides I show you kind of how you can drop it off the bottom and make its own. Um, yeah, so it's it's one of these things like you can do exponents or you can do logarithms. And they get you to the same answer, just one is a little more efficient. Obviously, the calculator is quick. Uh, but sometimes it's just nice to know the real concept, like what's happening, why we do it, that type of thing. But again, next week is really the application. All right, perfect. Here's that change of base problem that we had earlier. Um, so we have log, you know, uh, log of base A of x. And so what they do is they, you know, they make the log of x on the top. They make the log of the A on the bottom of the fraction. Um, and the B is can be any number. I just always make mine 10 so I can type it in the calculator. But you can make, like, if I had a log of base 7 of 60, you know, I can make this log of anything of 60 over a log of anything of 7. As long as that you drop the 7 out the bottom and you make its own logarithm like what you're seeing here. The 7 went to the, the A went to the bottom, the X stayed on the top as you're seeing here. And the B number, the base that's on your new change of uh, your change for the fraction, this base can be anything. You can make this any number you want. You can make it a thousand, you can make it ten, you can make it any number. It doesn't have to be any nice clean power of ten. Uh, you can make it any number you want. Um, so on this particular problem, they have this weird fraction. So I can just type this in the calculator and you know get the answer. Just take type in one, hit the division thing, type in, you know, type in that log two divided by log eight. You know, if I want to do that change of base idea, um, and type this in, get you know your decimal, whatever this is gonna be. Um, but I want to show you kind of different ways of doing this. I want to show you maybe maybe an easier way to get an answer, maybe not an easier way, but just different ways of thinking about problems so I can change them so maybe I can solve it in my head um, without you know always having to resort to a calculator maybe I, I'm just predicting here so um, this is 1 over log 8 of 2 now I don't like this 1 on the top if I can change that 1 to be something that uses a base of 8 like a log of 8 so log base 8 of 8 that is 1. Because what you're trying to do is predict what power do you put on an 8 that makes 8. Well, you put a power 1 on it makes 8. I've literally done that in almost every slide up to this point. So this, what you're seeing right here, is the same thing as the number 1. Now you're thinking, Ward, why did he even do that? Because, think about it this way, and this is log base 8 of 2. And if you notice, they both have the same bases. This is this part right here. It's already been expanded. I could change it back to what the original problem should have been. Think about that. This would be log. This two would jump back up, be the base number, and the number that's next to it would be this number. Okay, now hopefully you're following with that. That since they have the same bases here, I can make them back to one single logarithm. This item here is the same as that whole fraction because it's what I did up here where it's a change of base. I can make one logarithm into two by with division, as long as I make the, the base numbers the same on both. That's kind of what I was explaining. Well, why I'm doing that is because this item right here, I can actually solve this without a calculator. What power do you put on a two that makes eight? That's literally this problem. Well, two to the third power makes eight. This is the answer for this problem. It should be three. That's the answer. But again, you could type it in the calculator. It could, you know, do that what I showed you earlier. One divided by whatever log two divided by log eight is. Or I can change the base and do it all in my head. I don't know which one's easier for you. Maybe just you're really good at the calculator. You want to type that in? Fine, dandy. Maybe you like this whole change of base idea. Maybe this concept works for you, and you don't have to actually use the calculator at any point because you don't like it or you don't know how to type it in. 
Uh, yeah, kind of a cool concept. The answer to this problem was just three. Um, I got two problems left, and now they're going to get to the properties. The stuff we're going to be doing a little bit more next week. Um, it's called expanded form and simpl um, simplifying. So, so what you're looking at here is a logarithm. It's it's already been it's two things being multiplied together. Um, as you can tell here, these these items are being multiplied together. I can expand them since they are being multiplied together inside the parentheses. I can expand them using the same log button, but um, but what I can do is separate them so that there is just a plus sign in between them. There is no rule for addition and subtraction for logarithms. There is there is rules for products like you're seeing here. So I'm going to just expand this. This is it's not a way of getting it to an answer. I'm not trying to solve for x or anything like that. It's just expanding or simplifying uh, a logarithm down. This logarithm is really complex looking. If I can expand it out, maybe I can solve individual logarithms separately later. This is just a concept. I just picked this from it kind of random from from a text. So what we have here is we, we have two things being multiplied together. So I'm going to separate them first. Log base A of the x squared plus 1 to the what, fourth power plus the other log, log base a of the square root of x. Again, this is telling me what to do. It's telling me that if I have the same base, I can separate these two items that were being multiplied together into their own logarithms just with a plus sign in between them, which I did here. Now, we have one more rule, which I don't have listed here. It's called a, it's called a, a power rule. Anytime you have a logarithm, where there is a power on the logarithm, like what you're seeing here. I'm going to change the color. You can see this has a power of 4. You are allowed to drop the 4 out front of that logarithm by itself. And that is the simplified version of that logarithm. I can't go any further. These items are being added. They're not multiplied together, so I can't separate them any further. Um, but I can go to the back. This, technically, this, this logarithm back.